Hi everyone, this is Bob, the old ham again. Uh, just got this uh, SA2060 Heath Kit Deluxe Antenna Tuner. Arrived a couple days ago. And in part one of the videos on this, I discussed uh, the uh, initial visual examination and things that I had found. So this is part two of this uh, little series here on this. I thought I would probably make one or two videos, but it looks like I'm going to do at least three here. But so I have been working on this. I wanted to show you some of the things I did. First of all, uh, the set screws on these couplers, like you see right here, uh, were very, very tiny. Uh, 632, very short, eighth of an inch short, something like that. And uh, tightened with a very, very small Allen wrench. Right here. It's very, very difficult to get these tight enough with that little teeny Allen wrench. So, the easy thing to do that I have done is to remove those little tiny short 632 screws and replace them with 632 regular screws. These are round heads here, but it doesn't matter what kind of head they have. Uh, and a quarter inch long, and you can use a screwdriver and you can tighten these down tighter this way. And uh, it's a problem that we had uh, with, with the Heath kits that we were well aware of uh, when I worked in the service department. I was in the service department, I think, two years, and then I was promoted to engineering, and I worked in engineering for two years. So while working in the service department, uh, the first thing we found that was probably wrong with the Heath kit would be bad soldering. The second thing would be loose hardware. The third thing we looked for was the wrong part. Uh, resistors in the wrong place, diodes in backwards, uh, capacitors in backwards, the wrong parts installed somewhere. Uh, so these are the things we looked for when we were repairing the Heath kits. And so anyways uh, I learned then that uh, how does a guy assembling a kit know how tight to tighten the hardware. And so uh, most of the kits that came in had at least a few, if not all of the screws, very loose. Once in a while you would get one that, uh, that had uh, uh, all of the screws loose. <laughs> this one here had a good portion of the screws and nuts to the various components loose. This is not all the, prop, the fault of the assembler because like I said before, how does the assembler know how tight to tighten these things? Also, things tend to loosen up from vibration and all over a period of time and heat expansion and contraction. So it's, it's common for hardware to loosen up. So anyways, I found a lot of loose hardware. Uh, the hardware that I've tightened so far I have marked with a red nail polish like this right here and over here. I'm going to have to take these off by the way because I have not examined what's inside of the little SWR compartment here which also has the uh, the RF connectors on the back here, the SO239 connectors and all. But I'm going to take that apart because there's screws in there I want to be sure are nice and tight and that everything is uh, is correct. So, so far what I've gone through, I found uh, several loose nuts. Uh, there was a nut on one of, the, uh, one of the controls here, I think it was this one down here, on this capacitor shaft. The nut inside that goes through the front panel was so loose I could take it off with my fingers. So anyways, these things do tend to loosen up. And things that are plastic, like this front panel, which is plastic that, it, that glues on here, it compresses when you tighten the nuts and mount the parts on them. And over a period of time, that compression increases and increases until you reach a point where the nut becomes very, very loose and you can take it off with your fingers. So these all had to be retightened, which I have done. The uh, control here for sensitivity, I took it completely out, folded it back, and I put a drop of 10W30 oil in there and uh, lubricated it on the inside. I put it into the little 
little spots that are available where the wires go into the control down there so I had to take it loose and turn it over to get down in there and be sure it went into the right place where the uh, where the carbon ring is inside you want to get it on that and uh, the 10w30 synthetic oil really works great for that I use a regular pardon my camera bouncing around I use a regular type syringe got these uh, actually got these from my doctor uh, but I did get some at the drugstore too and in both cases uh, the doctor and the uh, pharmacist uh, gave me a couple of, of syringes that were out of date they couldn't sell them because the uh, date had expired on them I guess just like when you're buying tomatoes or something they have dates that they have to be sold by so anyhow uh, those work really good and uh, when I explained to the pharmacist that uh, I was using it to to lubricate electronic shafts uh, shafts uh, on capacitors and things uh, in my electronics uh, experimentation uh, he said okay here's some that are out of date and I said thank you and the people behind me there was two or three people behind me and they looked at me kind of weird when I left I think maybe they thought is he getting those for drugs <laughs> Anyhow, uh, that's what I do with that uh, syringe, and it really works out great. And it helps you to not get too much oil uh, on things. Now you want to uh, you want to oil these capacitors right down in here, the end of this shaft. There's a wiper, a little brass wiper. You want to get a tiny bit of oil on that. You want to put a tiny bit of oil on the shaft right here on the bushing and then there's also another bushing behind the knob here you take the knob off or you can get it from the inside if you can get to it and then put a tiny bit of oil on that and the 10w30 oil seems to hold up really good I've had it in some of these pieces of equipment here for five or ten years and they're still working fine uh, if they start acting up I will certainly give them another lube job <laughs> Anyways, and so you can see here that this is coming along pretty good. Let's see if I, I have a list of things here. I did, uh, let's see, oh, flexible couplings. I decided that uh, th these knobs on here turn pretty tight when you rotate these capacitors. And uh, the, uh, the roller inductor uh, lines up better and is not uh, quite so hard to turn, but uh, the capacitors are. So I got to looking on eBay and other places for, for uh, shaft couplings, flexible shaft couplings. My, my brain is not so quick. You know, that, that term flexible shaft coupling took a few seconds to come into my brain. So if you notice any pauses like that, I'm 79 years old. And I'm starting to notice that when I try to think of the name of something, sometimes I have to think 10 seconds or more before it comes. Sometimes it doesn't come. So then I just uh, drop that subject and, and hopefully it'll pop up later. But uh, these are some of the things I'm experiencing at age 79. Okay. And now what I have to do yet to this, there will be a third segment on this and probably a fourth. I'm figuring a third segment to show the final things that have been done to it. And then the uh, fourth segment or fourth uh, part of this uh, SA2060A restoration, maintenance, uh, repair, whatever you want to call it, uh, will be uh, completed and I will do a, uh, a part then on operation of it, uh, demonstrating how it works. So uh, with that, uh, this is all I have for today. Uh, well, golly, I'm up to 20 minutes already. So, uh, so I'm going to say 73s, everybody there. And uh, everybody uh, stay healthy. This is Bob out.